welcome in everybody to another episode of the Brett Allen Show, a pop culture podcast where we interview your favorite actors and celebrities from film and television, movies, music, Broadway, comedy, wherever pop culture hangs out. You will find us there waiting on a park bench to talk to somebody about pop culture. And we have a huge guest with us today, actor and musician Wesley McKennis. And this is going to be a fun interview, a tale of multiple conversations that we are going to be having. But according to Deadline.com, he is going to be starring in an upcoming project here on Paramount Plus within just a couple days. Guilty Party, starring Jeff Stoltz, Jules, Latimer, Taya Sakar, Alana Uback, among a million other amazing people. Wesley, welcome into the podcast. It's great to have us have you here today. Thanks so much for having me on. Yes, well, we have a lot to talk about music and this new project, but let's talk about this new show that's getting ready to come out here very soon, Guilty Party, about the project, what it's about, and sort of your involvement in this massive conglomerate. This is huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and honestly, that that was right from the get-go. One of the big things about it is it's this joint venture between uh, CBS, Paramount Plus, and, and Funny or Die. So right out of the gate, you have this like really interesting tone that kind of has a lot to do with the show of like, you have the the big firepower of like a network, you know, of, of, of Paramount Plus, but you have Funny or Die sitting in the in there as well, who are obviously like big in their own right, but also like push the envelope with a lot of things. Um, so the tone of the show, it's like, it's a dark comedy. Uh, it also stars Kate Beckinsale, which is like the big, the big, like, um, you know, she's the top line A-lister of it. Um, and yeah, it, it, it was honestly just a pleasure to get to work on. It, it's so specific and and like, I don't know. We just got to do so many different kinds of like, it was a really niche fun comedy to be part of. Yeah. It's very exciting. And funny or die is, I mean, they are massive. That's part of Will Ferrell's stuff, right? He's involved with that or. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think so. I think so. And again, they were so encouraging. It was just like, I remember, you know, somebody on the first, on the first day dropped a, dropped an F bomb on, on set, like while cameras rolling. Oh, sorry. We blew a take on that. And they're like, no, 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 funny or die. Like, we can do that here. <laughs> We're like, oh, wow, cool. Like, it, it just changes the tone. Like, it, as you get into shows, you know, working from like broadcast style shows to, to streamers, there's certain tone changes that happen. Though, like, you know, different things you can get past different types of sensors, things you're allowed to say. And the show gets to be really cool with that and takes like, at the surface, it's, you know, uh, uh, a journalist who's trying to, you know, save this, you know, uh, uh, trying to help this woman who's been, you know, wrongly incarcerated, but then you end up having like, it kind of pokes fun at like the actual story of that and, and picks apart, like, um, you know, the potential saviorism in that. And, and, and you end up getting, it, it's, it's like a really, um, self-aware show that, that ends up like finding the comedy in a lot of really dark stuff. It does a really nice job of like dancing in and out of being like, you know, it is a dramedy. It's a dark comedy, and, and it has like all these neat beats where you really like. It's a real roller coaster ride. The scripts were just like they jumped off the page. You know, we got to do we did Zoom table reads of them, and the cast was all still spread over the world um, before everyone had showed up in Canada. And like you just see that they'd done such a good job casting it. The people like I, I hadn't done like a proper Zoom table read before, and it's you know different people were wearing different costumes, and some people <laughs> would like sort of put props together for theirs. But it, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I've heard some really funny stories about these Zoom table reads, which I think even though they were born out of necessity because of the pandemic and things, and although we are slowly moving through that and kind of out of it, I think that's going to maybe be the norm for production oh, yeah. these days. Because it, it's interesting, it's so much easier from what I understand to get people together schedule-wise. If you're doing record production and this, that, and the other, and you're taping you can dip out for an hour or so and do a table read on a zoom instead of maybe having to fly here or there. Have you, you know what I mean? Like it's a lot oh, easier. To totally. It, you're way more likely to get everybody together without like actually having to, having to add like an extra week of production wherein everyone has flown in. Like we, we were in so many places in the world and we did the table read. It, it, I don't know. There's something cool about it because you got to see everyone in their element before they showed up. Like once we all, once everyone shows up and is on set and is in their costume, like it feels cohesive, right? Because the show is kind of underway. 
But in that moment, you got to see a bunch of people before they had left home and like before they had been put in whatever clothes and before they'd had their like, you know, whatever haircut they were going to have on the show. You kind of got to see like where everyone was coming from. I I thought that was kind of neat. Yes. Well, you are a very busy individual. I mean, you've had a lot of projects come out over the last year or so. You've got your music, which we'll talk about here at the back end of our conversation. But you have another project coming out uh on october 19th i'm not sure how much you can talk about it or if you can talk about it so just pass me along honey girls which will be available on dvd and digitally exclusively october 19th but i do have to say guilty party according to deadline deadline deadline.com comes out on the 14th on paramount plus which is a streaming network so we'll link that in our show notes but let's talk about honey girls which is another fantastic thing that you've got going on my goodness yeah, that, that was fun because, you know, again, because I'm a musician, I've spent my whole life, you know, writing music and producing music and, and songwriting. Um, and I play uh, Calvin Maxine in it and, and, and I'm kind of like introduced in the, in the thing as like, he's like the greatest songwriter and producer in the world. <laughs> I love it. And it's like this big, I don't know, I had a, I had a laugh with that and I like, I got to tell all my like music friends like, oh yeah, I'm playing the greatest songwriter and producer in the world in a movie. <laughs> and they'd be like, all right, well, that's good for your ego. Um, it, yeah, man, it, it, it was fun because I, I get to just pull in so much of like stuff I already kind of know, like, you know, I, I'm auditioning for it, wearing my guitar. And like, we, we ended up doing a bunch of the filming in a studio where I've actually tracked one of my albums. That was like a neat, like weird, you know, coincidence here in Vancouver. But it's a really like uplifting music drama that's like you know has has these young girls basically chasing after their dreams and and has ashanti kind of mentoring them and uh, without without delving too far into like all the all the plot points of it you know i i just kind of get to be there to to encourage some cool stuff along the way and again to just you know be the greatest writer producer in the world which which for for me yeah again it's just like a novelty because you normally don't get introduced that way when you walk into a room yeah, I love it. A little art imitating life or life imitating art a little bit in this. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you've had the opportunity to help folks out along the way because you have a massive music career. But I would be remiss if I didn't talk about this, Cold Pursuit. You were in that, this, which was a fantastic film. Absolutely. Anything with Liam Neeson uh, is just a wild ride, I have to say. This movie was <laughs> a lot of fun. It also starred Emmy Rossum and Laura Dern. That's still available on Netflix. But if our listeners and viewers don't recognize the last name, they might probably recognize you as Wes Mack, musician. You have music that's coming out or has already come out. And the music career is massive for you. And I think that's so great that you were able to dip your toes in both worlds. Let's talk about your music if people may not be familiar and, and what the new music is about and what they can expect. Yeah, I mean, so I've been I've been putting out music in bands for basically my entire life. I think I started my first one when I was 13 years old or something. And I, you know, I, I didn't probably have any commercial success at it until I was like in my mid twenties. And like I, I there's like a certain struggle in that, but there's also stuff in that that I'm pretty grateful for because like when all of a sudden I remember specifically when we did the like the Shania like arena tour and walking out there and you have more appreciation for that having played a lot of empty bars in your life. Like I know, I know people I've watched artists who sometimes, you know, will get a record deal, like when they're very young and not kind of go through that phase. And I think it almost robs you of how cool certain things are in that, like you, you, when you, when you get it in levels, when you see it in stages and you kind of have to fight for each level of it, um, when you, you know, when you have the wins, the small wins, and then the occasional big win, like you appreciate it a lot. So my, you know, my music career has been an interesting roller coaster ride and I've been fortunate to get to do it bunch of awesome stuff in it and so this is i've now got i guess it'll be the second single coming out off my third album um it's called ain't got you and i'm actually honestly right after we um after we do this interview i'm we're still working on some of the production of it and we're doing a, a zoom drum session so i'm actually if we're talking about like zoom table reads this is Myself, I'll be sitting here. There'll be a producer sitting in a different city and a drummer sitting in a different country. And we will uh, be working on the drums for this. And I find that really neat. That like, I mean, there are certainly like, you know, the, the ultimate case scenario is always having, you know, people in the same room, you get a certain energy going. But like, there is something very, um, 
welcome to the future ish of like when you can be creating music that way and be like, Oh, dope. This guy's an amazing player. And it's pretty easy to do what we're going to be able to do today. Pretty casually. Yeah. That's fascinating. I think this zoom thing is going to really just change the landscape for a lot of entertainment as far as yeah, whether it's an artist like yourself, an actor, I mean, even when this whole thing started, Saturday Night Live was one of the first to pivot and do an entire show. Yeah, via I watched Zoom. that. <laughs> and it wasn't even like, you know, eventually they did things better and, you know, adjusted. But they're like, well, we still have to deliver this entertainment to people. And they did it. It's crazy. Like all of the table reads and, and all of the, you know, things that came out of this pandemic were very positive. You mentioned the Shania Twain tour. I want to talk to you about that because that's a massive thing to tour with somebody like that and to open for them. And and I've never really asked this question and I'm very curious. So you find out you're going to tour with Shania. This is like huge. Like, and then you take your first time out on stage in front of thousands and thousands of people. How do you mentally get in a space to be able to perform for that many people like you've been performing a lot over your entire career so you've obviously got the experience in and the stripes and the receipts to do it but what is that first moment like when you walk out on the stage and you're like okay here i am here here's my music it's it's got to be an incredible moment for you yeah i mean it's it's kind of as you might expect is a real mixture of like it was the, I was very aware that it was like, oh, this is easily the biggest thing I've ever participated in. And it was also, I would say the most nervous I'd ever been in my life. Um, I, I'm someone, I, I always am, am nervous before I step on set, before I step on stage, before I do an interview like, like this. I just, that's like, it, I care about all these things. I care about my career. I care about the stories I tell. Um, I think that probably informs why I, I, I feel like that. But I, I do find usually, the one liberating thing is once I'm acting, once I'm playing music, once I'm chatting in an interview, whatever it is, I tend to relax. So there's a certain like, um, you know, you've just got to get there across the like start line and then things can be fun. But I remember specifically um, beyond being on the tour, I, I sang with her every night. We sung her song Party for Two and we'd, we'd rehearsed it once on the day of in Seattle and <laughs> It was showtime. And I remember specifically waiting side stage and like being aware, like, oh, this is the most nervous I've ever been in my life. Like I feel like <laughs> heart just like hammering. And so, you know, she introduces me and says, ah, I'm going to bring up my friend here to help me sing a song. This is Wes Mack. And I walk on the race cheering and I, the song starts. And I remember I felt like very stiff. I felt, felt like my whole body was made of wood. Um, and she looked over at me and I'll never forget it. She said, Wes, get closer to me and put her arm around my waist and like pulled me over. And I like, I literally thought I was just going to die. Like it was, it was so, it was so <laughs> yeah. surreal and strange, but honestly, uh, uh, you know, uh, kudos to her and, and she was wonderful, but like, I'm sure she saw that, that I was a little stiff and that honestly, oh, like sure. it, it shook off right away. I was like, you know what, let's just embrace this and have fun. And, and that easily became uh, every night getting to sing that with her. I, I've sung that song now with her 19 times. Uh, and it was, it was always the most fun part of the show. Like it was just, you're so in a, you're so well supported in that moment where you're like, cool, I'm singing with one of the best singers ever. The band behind us are each individually as good as you can be at that instrument. Everyone working the lights, everyone working the sound. Like you're so, that was the coolest part of the tour is like everyone was so kind so and so supportive and so talented that like it just made doing your job easy um you know comparative to when you're playing the you know a dive bar and there's no one there and like i remember back in the day having to like i was playing bass in my friend's band we had no sound guy so i would have a long patch cable and i would go <laughs> I love it. having to adjust the sound while i was playing and it's like it's harder you're not as supported there so there's more things that can go wrong um but yeah the shania tour is uh, it was just it was a ton of fun once we got rolling that is fantastic. What an incredible story. And, and we've been chatting today with Wesley McKinnis, a.k.a. Wes Mack, musician, actor, and he has amazing music coming out here soon. And also uh, the TV series Guilty Party premiering on October 14th on Paramount Plus, according to Deadline.com. And also he's got this fantastic project as well, Honey Girls, available exclusively on DVD and digitally on October 19th. 
And of course, this episode will air long before then. Thanks for listening today and pressing play and also checking out the replay later on our brand new YouTube channel. Be sure to check it out and subscribe. You all have made the call to watch the video interviews and I have arduously said, okay. Uh, and uh, we're releasing these slowly but surely, but be sure to share this episode with a friend. It's absolutely free and you could probably do it from the device that is in your hand and it helps us talk to more amazing people like Wesley. Wesley, thanks for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it. It was a total pleasure.